Hello, hello, hello. So glad y'all could join us on this wonderful Thursday night for Mike and Elizabeth Unscripted right here in our family room. So we're just thankful that y'all are here and we've got a wonderful subject to talk about tonight and uh, hope y'all have enjoyed the sunshine and enjoyed your day. Uh, glad you're here. That was a tense moment at the beginning. Why? I wasn't sure if you were going to start or not. Oh, I have. <laughs> so I was thinking, do I need to talk? Do uh, I need to talk? <laughs> no, I'm, I'm always on cue for talking. I noticed that the picture we have advertising this um, oh, popcorn. Oh, popcorn. Just uh, <laughs> evidenced itself. Uh, that picture we have advertising this. Uh -huh. has got you with your mouth open and me with my mouth closed. Yeah, was that's there, normal. That's, that's a, totally symbolic of our was life. A, well, you chose that picture. I yeah, so. it, it's because I know that's how <laughs> it is most of the time. Well, they do say that women speak how many more words than men an hour? Is that because we're brighter? I'd like to look that up. Oh. Uh, uh, probably uh, you've got a, a, a more intricately evolved... Uh, cranial system or something. Is that what it is? Yeah, I'm sure. I'm going to look up how many more words women speak. I'm looking right, up so to you see go how ahead. many's on here. Uh, we're just waiting for everybody to hop on and uh, give you all a few minutes. I know everybody's getting home from work or cooking or cleaning or doing the laundry. So we're just watching and waiting, getting ready to see how many's here. Uh, and uh We've got quite a few people. Hello, hello from Chicago. Wow, hey. all the way up in Chicago. Yeah, hey Bonnie, hey everybody. So glad you're here. I'm going to be watching. Uh, tonight we have a wonderful subject. Uh, it's a subject I love to hear Mike preach on, and that's out of Matthew 11, 28 through 30. And uh, it's a great, great scriptures in the Bible. Uh, have you found it yet? Uh, women, sometimes 47,000 hey, words in a day. 47,000 words in a day. Yeah, that That's means I'd probably do 80. And, I'm an overachiever. And men, 15,669. I mean, they got it down right. They they didn't get that detailed with women. They just said 47,000. But men, it's 15,669. And that's really pushing it, I guess. So, so we that's... Do three times more. Yeah, that's... We just have a way of condensing what we have to say into short, logical, practical statements. No. <laughs> Men speak in black and white and women speak in full color. Yeah, I, I could go I like that. that. Uh, years ago, uh, Seth, one of his friends was asking me a question and Seth said, don't do it. Nothing with her is black and white. It will be a full color sermon if she's talking to you. And so I can see that. Don't y'all think that women speak more than men? We talk more than men, but we have more interactions too. Yeah. We, we well, talk. you're relational. Women are more relational. They're relational oriented. Men are goal oriented. And hey, relation requires communication. Yeah, I'm so, a good communicator. So. Uh, I really am. So, yes, and I enjoy are. talking. I enjoy uh, finding out. I imagine a lot of, that a she lot enjoys of times, talking. <laughs> a lot of times when we're going to a church, uh, when we start going in, I'll give Mike a rundown. I'll say, "Now you remember they're married to them, and they have the two kids, and those kids, and and I can I have." a wonderful, wonderful uh, ability to, to memorize things. Recall. And recall. It's supernatural and It's recall. a supernatural because I remember what happened. I'm just awestruck. If we were there a year ago, do you remember that? And Mike goes, no, I don't remember that. And uh, do you know remember that? No, I don't remember that. So uh, it's a good thing to, and that's exactly what we're going to be talking about tonight, your strengths and your weaknesses and how God puts people together, yokes them together. Yeah. And, uh, you know, Mike's, strengths is my weaknesses and my weaknesses is, is his strengths so we does no, that make you sense? said the same thing my strengths are your weaknesses and your strengths are my uh, yeah, weaknesses yeah and it, <laughs> it works <laughs> it works good together and uh i think god puts people together to function in a higher calling i, I think god that. puts people in churches uh to be able to fulfill your destiny i think marriages are birthed to um 
to, if it's the right one, to f help you further along in your work in the kingdom. So we're going to be talking about Matthew 11, verse 28 through 30. Right. And we have not discussed this No, uh, we're today. unscripted. Uh, I'm a little frightened sometimes. So why don't I just read it? Read it's it. one of my favorite passages of scripture. I'm sure you love it too if you're a Bible reader. Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. That's I love that. the, some of the most beautiful words Jesus ever spoke. Come unto me, all you who labor and are heavy laden. You're under a heavy burden. You're being crushed by the weight of what you're facing in life mentally and emotionally and demanding things on you physically, demanding your, of your time, demanding of your attention. You're under this heavy burden. Well, uh, how do you get rid of it if you have to fulfill your responsibilities, if you have to continue in the same job, continue in some of the same circumstances? How can this make it better? Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. You know, but I think the first thing is he says, come to me. Right. He doesn't say, I'm going to come where you are. Right. He says, you have to make up your mind to get up to come to him. Where do you do that? Not physically, but in your spirit. In your spirit. You know, in you have to, uh, sometimes there's been times in my life that I didn't want to do anything. And, uh, and, and Mike has always been my my warrior, my encourager, and he would say things like, you need to pray. And I'd be like, I don't want to pray. Or you need to get in the scriptures. I don't want to get in the scriptures. You need to get worship. I don't want to worship. Now, and don't y'all judge me because you know you've been there too. And, and then once I do that, once I would make up my mind, I am going to come to him. See, he could come to you, but sometimes, and sometimes I think he does come to you. Right. But there's times when he requires of you to to lay away, lay aside things that are going on in your life and come to me. He, I mean, he's giving you an that invitation. That doesn't necessarily mean go somewhere and pray, it, but it does mean inclining your heart to toward him. him in every circumstance. That's why he said, trust in the Lord with all your heart. And lean lean not to your own understandings. In all your ways, all your ways. acknowledge him. That's how you come to him. No matter what you're doing, if it's a boring, mundane job that you have to do day after day after day, come to him. Have a come to Jesus moment on your way to work every day where you say, now, Lord, there's a lot of repetitive stuff I have to do that's boring me to death, but I offer it to you as an act of worship. I'm going to make this day a sacrament, something sacred, because I'm committing it to you. And when you come to him, then you next take his yoke upon you. So we cannot be yokeless. You're going to have a yoke one, one way, way or the other. other. Uh, the Bible describes sinners as being yoked under sin. And that means sin drives you. Sin uh, pulls you the direction of destruction and death. See, when two animals are yoked together, they've got to be willing to go the same speed the same direction for the same purpose. Mm -hmm. The same speed for the same direction for the same purpose. And sin is leading to death. And if you're yoked to sin, it's going to carry you to death mentally, death emotionally, death spiritually, ultimately death physically, and the second death. Do you know it's a horrible they, thing. Do you know how they train oxen to be yoked together? No, I don't. I do. Did you study that today? I did. I, oh, I, wow. I try to find things that I think Mike won't know, but they take, I don't. they take oxen, and about a week before they introduce them to the yoke, they start tying them to like a tree or a post to get them used to being tied to something. Hmm. Uh, and then, after about a week of that, as long as they're not kicking and bulking and... Also, and they're not near each other. Oh, no. They're just tied to an immovable object. Yes, and they're tied. Huh. And as long as they learn how to function, being tied to that post or to uh, a tree and not fighting against it and pulling at it, and it hurts them when they pull against it. 
And once they learn how to be uh, tied to that, then they will take them and they will put a yoke on them, but they never put them on the same age. Okay. They always take a, an older oxen who has learned the way of life. I'm an old ox. <laughs> and, and they put a new one with them. And then that older teaches the younger. And I've always loved that scripture. My mom used to quote it all the time. Let the older women teach the younger. And that older oxen will teach them how to flow. And I love this too. If they put the young oxen on the right, that's always its place from there on. They never take that uh, the right oxen and put it on the left. It throws it, has, it off. Huh? It has learned its place. You have to get a pattern in your life. Yep. Yeah. It, it has learned its place, and it knows exactly what it's supposed to be doing. And then immediately, and then after after they get acclimated to that, they will actually come up and put their head in the yoke themselves. Oh wow! Is that not amazing? I'm so cool to that. I studied this really hard. <laughs> they will actually, all the, the farmer or the master or so whoever So how do you is, apply that? Uh, don't do that to me. <laughs> <laughs> they, they will hold it out, and the oxen will actually come up and surrender and put their head in the yoke all by themselves without being forced on. Well, that's easy uh, to use as an illustration or an application because God doesn't put extremely heavy responsibilities on you right at the beginning. He tests your responsibility. Yeah. He tests your faithfulness. Always. He tests your love. He tests your resiliency. He sees what you're capable of. And then when you pass that test, you move Get up you to more. the next level of responsibility and the next level until when you see an opportunity that comes from God, you stick your head in the yoke without him even You're leading you there. You're surrendered. You're so used to it. Hey, yeah, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to preach that. No, he's <clears throat> if y'all hear him preach that, he better give me credit. But, I and I also like the fact that it takes a season of preparation for them to learn how to not pull against the rope. And how not to fight against what their their purpose is. Oxen are meant to be in a yoke. Mm -hmm. They're meant to be a beast of burden. They're not meant to be on the race, you know, racehorse. They're not that. They have to learn how to not pull against what their purpose is. Don't you like that? I do. And I think that's a lesson we all have to learn. And usually when two mules are yoked together, and I'm sure it's probably the same uh, with oxen, in fact, you just explained it in different words. But when you have two mules yoked together, you've got a lead mule. And that that mule is the one who sets the pace. Yeah. And the other one has to keep up with the lead mule. And, of course, Jesus is the lead mule. And he's the one that sets the pace for our lives. You don't want to be behind God, and you don't want to get ahead of God. Because if you're yoked to the Lord, you've got to move in perfect uh, divine order in your life. Don't try to jump into something before you're prepared mm. for it. But no. don't lag behind because a window of opportunity only lasts for so long. And you can't make it happen when that window closes. So it's very important to be yoked with him. But the curious thing about this scripture is that you don't yoke animals together to go sit in the shade no. and be at peace. And and so it's almost a disconnect. It doesn't really make sense, yet it does when you interpret it correctly. He said, come to me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. Learn from me. You might want to underscore those yeah. words. Learn from me. See how I do things. See how I react to persecution. See how I react to rejection. Learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. So he ties this, this concept of being yoked to him to his character. He said, if you're yoked with me, you're going to find rest for your souls. Why? Because I'm gentle and I'm lowly in heart. So in other words, he's saying, when you learn to be 
gentle and lowly in heart. And you got to, if you're yoked to me, because we go the same speed, the same direction, and react to the same circumstance the same way. What would Jesus do? Then uh, you're going to find rest because you're not going to be an angry, striving person. You're not going to be an overbearing, prideful person. You're going to be gentle, and you're going to be meek, and you're going to be lowly in heart. And that word meek means quick, uh, and the King James Version uses the word meek, and the New King James uses the word gentle. They're related words, but they are different, because meekness means you are quick to surrender to God and quick to forgive those who hurt you or damage you in any way. So if you're yoked to the Lord, that means you have to forgive people, because in the Old Testament, there's a really strange scripture that deals with being yoked. And I got to use the, the, the Bible wording, excuse me, don't be offended by this, but the King James Version says, you shall, thou shalt not yoke an ox and an ass together. Would you interpret that, my dear? <laughs> uh, no, I would not. No, no. I would not. Oh, no. God doesn't want to be yoked with people that kick against his will, mm -mm. like a, a jackass would, like a donkey would. And, uh, and, and so God reflected that spiritual lesson in a common command that seems irrelevant. Why would it even matter uh, to God, the creator of the universe, that some Jewish guy trying to plow his field has one ox and one ass, and God said, don't yoke them together. And he's standing there trying to figure out why is this even important to God. It wasn't so much the action, but what it represented. Mm -hmm. And it was God's way of saying he cannot yoke himself with rebellious-minded people. Yeah. And you and I have to have a submitted heart. And then we have rest for our souls while we're working. He didn't say rest for your body. He said you'll have rest for your souls. Yeah. Because, see, many of you have all kinds of strife in your life. You've got strife at home with children that aren't doing exactly what you want them to do, that disappoint you sometimes. Now, we have uh, just about a perfect daughter. And so, that well, every now and then she gets a little fussy. But, but nothing major. But some of you, <laughs> she's looking at me right now, I'm oh, sure. Uh, she's just as sweet as she can be. Uh, but anyway, some of you have some real stress level in your home because maybe a child hasn't learned submission or obedience yet or what have you. Or maybe you've got tension beyond tension at work. But you can have this amazing Rest. attribute of rest in your soul and people will wonder why is he so calm everybody else around here is stressed out and screaming and cussing at each other and you just say calm and peaceful it's because he had a come to Jesus moment before he got to work or years ago when he got saved then he got yoked with the one that knows how to be peaceful in very stressful situations Yeah, that's why God's in Psalm 46, describes the whole world being destroyed. And yet at the end, he says, be still and know no, that I am God. I you can scripture. be still and know that he is God, even when the earth is removed and the mountains carried into the midst of the sea and the seas roaring and the waves roaring and the mountains trembling. And he says, be still and know that I am God, Selah, uh, which means pause and peacefully reflect on this. Only people yoked to Jesus can be peaceful in the midst of chaos. That's true. You know what I'm thinking about? And I have no idea. That airplane flight from oh, Jerusalem. Oh, that's a horrible story. <laughs> <laughs> that's terrible. Uh. We were on a jet plane that reminds me of a song I sang back when I was a rock musician in the 60s. I'm leaving on, on a jet, jet plane. plane. <laughs> but anyway, we were... <laughs> now, uh, don't think that's in my uh, repertoire of songs now. But uh, anyway, we were coming back from Jerusalem on a jumbo jet with about 500 people. 
and uh, everyone had overloaded suitcases, so the plane was overloaded weight-wise, I'm sure, uh, compared to what it was coming over to Israel. And we were rolling down the tarmac, and uh, all of a sudden we found out later what happened. One of the engines sucked in a flock of birds, and it blew up, and fire shot back uh, out of the engine, about 40 feet, I guess, 30 or 40 feet, right past not Elizabeth. Bad to me. I saw she it. was I saw it. the closest one to the exploding engine on the whole plane. Oh, Wouldn't you know it? I have never seen Elizabeth launch into Boom. speaking in tongues so fast, yep. so loud. I mean, she was in the anointing to the maximum level. And uh, <clears throat> when that engine blew up, it sent a shutter through the whole plane and two other engines stalled, and we got off the tarmac on the strength of one engine, and then the other two stalled engines kicking back into gear. The next day in the Jerusalem Post, they said there was no way, technically, when you do the math on it, I guess, it's horrible that that plane should have made it off the ground. And this was in the Jerusalem Post. It said, all we know is the plane was full of Christians returning uh, from the Feast of Tabernacles to the United States. And when they prayed, the plane became airlocked. But I was scared to death. And I was I wasn't going to tell that part. I was scared to death. I was thinking my children are not going to have a mama. <laughs> and I didn't, who did I leave them to? My mind was just in full. And I look over at Mike. You know, I, I've just seen the engine blow up, fire. And the car, kind I mean, of, kind it of started stressful. just shaking. And I mean, it was it was scary. And I look over at Mike, and he's just sitting there, just just as calm. And I looked at him, and I said, "Mike, why aren't you praying?" And he said, "I am praying. I am praying. In my heart of hearts, I'm believing God that He'll take care of us." And I said, "Besides, I know it's not my time to go." And I said. <laughs> But it might be my time to go. And so, you know, and, and we were out over the Mediterranean Sea and they were dropping the fuel. And Mike was like, don't worry. I mean, it'll be okay if we, if we go down in the, in the sea. They'll, we'll just swim. I said I was I, I was qualified as a lifeguard when I was a teenager. And so, I didn't swim at the time. So I didn't I, swim. I, I said, if you won't choke me to death and pull me <laughs> under, I'll pull you to shore. Oh, uh, yeah. So, But I did not have rest for my soul. And there's something I like about that, too. Two times in those two, three scriptures, he says rest. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. He said, and he I said will this. give you he says, rest, so it's a gift from rest, God. But then he says, and then you when shall you, find rest. Yeah, he says, take my yoke upon you and learn from me. Uh, and when you take that yoke and you learn, then you find rest. Don't you like that? I like that. Once you come to him, he says, oh, I'm so glad you came. I'll give you rest. But then he says, a next step, once you learn of me, then you will find rest. Don't mm. you like that? Yeah, so it's something you have to revisit. It's yeah. something, once he gives it to you, it's not a constant state of mind. You've oh, got no. to go back and revisit the next day and reclaim. More problems. <laughs> and, yeah, because every you know. day is uh, sufficient under the day is the evil thereof, yeah. Jesus said. You so, know, and you have to find rest every day for your soul. You have to come to him every day. I've never seen day. that. Is I that, know, I'm so good tonight. You're a theological <laughs> genius. Oh, I even know what the Greek word is. For rest oh, is. come on. I do, I do, I do. I pronounce it, it. Let me look it up. Okay, while you look you it up. It. But I will go ahead and say it. No, I'm it hiding is, the screen. I, yeah, no, I may not get it right, but I know what it's supposed to say. And it's anapazo. And it means take a pause. Oh. Anapazo. See? Anapausis. Uh -uh, an anapausis. No, ana no anapazo. Well, wait a second. It might be different up here. Anapowo and anapos. Don't mess up my scripture. Well, anyway, it, it means, means take what? a pause. Take a pause. It means take a, take break. a break. It means right now, no matter what's going on in your life, Matthew eleven twenty eight through thirty. Come Breathe. unto me, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke, and you'll find rest for your soul. Breathe. He's saying take a pause from it. Just uh, yeah. sometimes when craziness is going on. And, and destiny is the worst because when, when the whirlwind of crazy is going on, I need to take a pause. And so I will step away or I will, and she'll come running, what's wrong? Like, you know, she's all in fact, well, and I'm like, 
I just need a minute. I need a minute to pause and I'll be okay. And she's like, oh, you know, because if I don't take that rest, if I don't take that pause, usually I say something I shouldn't. No, not you. Yeah, or I <laughs> do something that I shouldn't. And once I pause and breathe, you know, and I just feel like some of you just need to stop and breathe for a minute. Because, anger, anger rests in the bosom of fools. Yeah, you know, and not just <clears throat> anger. And a soft but answer, stress. a soft answer turns away wrath. You know, stress can make you do things that you wouldn't normally do. Right. Or uh, horrible. You know, there's things that happen in your life. You just have to stop a minute. Used to, I, <laughs> when Destiny and Seth would be fighting, I would make them stop and look at each other and count to ten before they did anything. I'd say, stop, and let's count to 10. And we were taking a rest for a minute. We were taking a minute to pause and breathe and think things through. And that way, it gives your mind a moment to reevaluate the situation. If you act quickly, you know, if you, my mother used to say this, I, and it's so funny, I would be, uh, you know, I am an active person, aggressive, and and, oh, I mean, I'm ready to do it. I'll take care of it. And so many times my mother would say, you need to stop. And I'd be like, no, I'm going to take care of this right now. And then I'd say, but mother, look what they've done. And then in her sweet little Alabama thing, she would say, but look what they did to Jesus. And I would go, yeah, he died. And then she'd say, but on the third day he was resurrected. And I'd go, oh, she got me there. You know, she's got me there. And so there's a resurrection coming. Oh, yeah. Uh, for people who die to self and take his yoke mm -hmm. and forgive their enemies and go on with life yeah. and not be stressed out. Mm -hmm. There's a resurrection day coming for you. Yeah. God will have the final say. -so. Always. God always has the final say. And uh, so if you're yoked with him, you give control to him. Hmm. And, uh, and it's very important to always... Give control to God and let him be the leader. You know, uh, let him be the one in charge. Let him guide you. Let him... Uh, well, that that should take a lot of stress off of you when you know your future is really dictated by God. Then you're just taking it one step at a time. I don't know everything about my future, but I do know the last thing that he told me to do. And I'm acting on that until the rest of his will opens before me. Yeah. And it's a very peaceful thing to be working very hard. I, I work sometimes 18 hours, 19 hours a day on what we do ministerially, but it's not stressful to me because there's a, a peace in knowing mm -hmm. this is the purpose of God. Yeah, And, and that makes all the and difference. And we enjoy what we do. You know, uh, a lot of times people, uh, I was just at a church recently and someone said, is your Facebook true? And I, <laughs> and I was like, uh, yes. And they was like, really? You do that much? But when you're yoked with, with Christ, everything you do is joyful. And so I'm enjoying everything. Not Well, let me rephrase that. There's some things I do not enjoy, but in the midst of it, there's rest in my soul. So I'm able to do 18 hours of work without it uh, killing me mm -hmm. because I'm joyful in doing it. I, I've got rest in my soul. And I've seen you do it many times. Yes. Like back when you used to run a summer youth uh, or uh, what do you call the kids camp? Yeah, the VBS, yeah. Vacation VBS. Bible School. She'd work all night long. Oh, we had on, such a good time. On building the sets and everything. Oh, and maybe so get fun. an hour's sleep. And, yeah. And yet you were happy. You were, we're peaceful. So you were fulfilled because you knew you were doing something that had value. Well, if you're in the will of God, you don't even realize that you've just spent 10 hours doing something. Right. Because you're just like, oh. And a lot of times we would go. And when we was first started working on your book, remember, we would we'd just be working on the books and doing things in the ministry. The and, sun would and come up. And the sun would come up and we'd go, <laughs> what time is it? And it's like 5.30 in the morning. You just, it's rest. Yeah. It, it's a crazy word. So how can we apply this to everybody that's watching though? Because some of the people watching have to be at work at 5.30 in the morning. They mm -hmm. get home at 6 o'clock at night. So how are they going to apply this to their lives? Because no matter where you're at, if you're yoked with him and he's leading you and guiding you, even if it's a job that you don't enjoy, he can make 
even your enemies to mm -hmm. be your footstool. And, and two, there may be one person at work that God has positioned you there to reach. Yeah. One person is not unimportant. Daniel reached one person. His name was Nebuchadnezzar. And Nebuchadnezzar made a decree that the whole world would accept the God of Daniel. And so he reached one, and that one reached all. So you never know how important your day-to-day -day peaceful yeah. witness in a stressful environment may be. Because people are watching you more than you yeah. know. You know, my mom worked at a garment plant. It, it was called Era Garment Plant. And it was not her thing. favorite thing to do in the world. She sat there for like eight hours sewing collars on shirts. And, you know, moving her foot, moving her hands. When she got older, her hands hurt from that. And she would say, I just want to do something for the Lord. And I guess he just has me placed there. I guess he just has me placed there. And at the end of her life, she would tell me, I wish I had done more. I wish I had done more. But she was yoked with him. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, if anyone was, she your mother was. She was yoked with him. And at her funeral, uh, one of the ministers there was talking how my mother had witnessed, and I just seen one of mother's converts on, logged on. Oh, hey, really? Linda, yeah. And my mother witnessed to someone named Peggy Jean, and Peggy Jean got in church. That's got to be an Alabama name. It is. It's Peggy Jean. <laughs> Peggy Jean. And, and uh, <laughs> then Peggy Jean had sisters. And they got in church, and then they had children, and then it was like a domino effect. So at her funeral, one of the uh, ministers was like, whoever is in church today or whoever has been touched and brought into the kingdom, would you please stand by up by, no. by my mom, a little garment worker, a factory worker who never just sewed collars. Just she didn't never go to the mission but field. But she was yoked she with was the Lord. Yoked. She didn't go to the mission field. She didn't preach. Dear Lord, don't have her sing. <laughs> Please do you remember. And if she <laughs> shouted when you were oh, in the room, it was hair raising. Yeah, it was hair raising. <laughs> but almost everyone in that church stood up and acknowledged that their life had been touched by her because she was yoked with God. And she changed the life of people. And, and so if you're at Walmart or if you're at a factory, you have to find what God's called you to do in that factory and be yoked with him and, and, and go down the path that he's leading you and watch. He can change the whole atmosphere and the whole world that you're in right it, there. It, it's a, a process. And, it's, uh, and God has a much bigger perspective than we do. If you hook two oxen together and they plow a field, it doesn't look like anything's been accomplished, just a big <laughs> row in the dirt. What value is that? But when you look at it from a, a, a more long-term perspective and you see the whole harvest, uh, the whole cycle, the season of planting, the season of harvest and how it all works together, then you see the value of what those animals did when they were yoked together Yeah. because there was an ultimate goal. And so just start being peaceful that, yeah. uh, and be gentle and be meek and be lowly. lowly in heart. That, what does lowly that, in heart mean? Well, it means that you are not prideful, you are not arrogant, you are not self-absorbed, you are not egotistical. To be lowly in heart is to realize the ground is level at the cross. Mm -hmm. There's no big eyes. There's yeah. no little use. We're all equally lost without God and all equally in need of the blood of Jesus being applied to our lives. Yeah. A person who has lowliness of, of spirit is at home uh, sitting next to the wealthiest or most intelligent or most authoritative yeah. people, and they're very comfortable sitting next to the most uh, uneducated or poor people uh, that they happen to come in contact with. They They fit anywhere and everywhere because they're not playing this game of, trying to be I superior they're they're yoked with the lord and he came to be a servant of all and if we really are yoked to him we have the mindset of being a servant to all a servant Everybody, to the wealthy a the servant same. to the poor a servant to the intellectual a servant to the uneducated it doesn't matter yeah. if we spend time with jesus we will be like him 
And uh, awesome. if you're yoked to him, you're going to spend a lot of time with him. Every day is going to be a new lesson. Yeah. And so I wonder what lessons you've learned today. <laughs> Maybe you ought to shoot us an email yeah, and tell us, us an email. tell us what you learned when you were yoked with Jesus Somebody this said, week. You can't plant no seeds without the plowing. Right, right. And, you know, or the so, seed will never come to maturity. You know, and so uh, someone said it's like a military walking together in the same beat. I love that. Uh, I'm, I'm reading. I'm reading them. Well, uh, it's been uh, 35 minutes. You think Has we should it close? Really? Yeah, it's been 35 minutes. Oh well, we love y'all so much. Love I, you very much. I can't believe it's been 35 minutes. Can y'all believe it's been 35 minutes? Uh, Destiny's over here saying yes. I can believe it's been 35 minutes. Uh, but we enjoy our Thursday nights unscripted. I hope you do. If you do enjoy it, share it. Share it on your page. There's just a little button down there. It's just a little arrow, and share it over there. Uh, every Thursday night, no matter where we are. Now, next in two weeks, we'll be on the road, but we'll still be. Yeah, we'll doing have to this. make sure. We'll have to we'll, make sure we. Uh, work we'll find our a time. way to do yeah, it. Yeah, we'll do it. And remember, Sunday night. Mike is going to be doing uh, deeper, going deeper, going going deeper, deeper. Sunday night, seven o'clock, and I think that he's going to be talking on Pentecost Sunday night. Is that right? Uh, well, I know I'll be speaking on a Sunday morning. Okay, I don't uh, know. I don't know what I'm talking about on that. But and then <laughs> remember, Mike's two podcasts are very important. Tomorrow, Tuesday is revealing <clears throat> the true life. Tomorrow is discovering your spiritual identity. And I teach on being heirs of the kingdom tomorrow. Wow, oh. and it, it just, the anointing just flowed through me like liquid fire while I was doing it today. Liquid fire. So uh, liquid please fire. listen. So please share. Uh, make sure you're with us uh, next Thursday night. Make sure you listen to Mike on Sunday and listen to our podcast. And remember, if you ever need anything, all you have to do is send us a message. Let us know. If you need a prayer, uh, we'll pray. I mean, we will intercede for you. Uh, and, and find somebody. Find a church to be yoked up to with. Yeah, yeah, because uh, the yoke is not only between us and the Lord. Yeah. We're tr called to be true yoke fellows with him, mm -hmm. but also we're called to be true yoke fellows with each other. So. And uh, that's found in Philippians chapter 4, verse 3, uh, that we are yoke fellows together. So let's learn how to walk in unity and walk in purpose together. We're yoked Praise with y'all, and yes. we love y'all. Have a great night. Bye-bye. Thank you for joining.